Hello and welcome to Sweet Spot DFS. This is a strategy video for the 2021 Waste Management Open. And usually we like to cover in these strategy videos, I really like to narrow down player pools by using the bucket system. If you're unfamiliar with what that is, I'll link a video top right hand corner that'll explain what the bucket system is. If you are familiar with it, but you have no idea what this tournament's buckets are, you can always find that in the preview video. I always put the bucket system for each tournament because it is different for each tournament in the previews. So I'll go ahead and, and check that out. Um, I like to include that with a new thing that I only include in the strategy videos called the strokes gain buckets. So I've kind of expanded it and I'm still experimenting with expanding the buckets even more with including maybe course history or recent form. So maybe I will include those later on. We'll see. I, I have done the recent form before. I could have probably done it this week, but uh, I ended up holding off and not doing it. Anyways, I like to combine all that with tea time pairings. Try to find groups that might be in a hot pairing. Uh, I'll explain more on that when we get there. I also like to kind of do a recap of the preview as well as the course fit video. Now this week, both of those videos were in one, so you can go ahead and check that out. A lot of that had to do with the fact that I didn't have enough information to cover a full course fit video, and I'll explain that later as well. Um, and then I'm going to use the optimizer at the end. We're going to use all of that, incorporate all of that into the optimizer, which uses all of my constraints that looks at all the buckets and spits out the most optimal lineup. So I will definitely show you what that looks like a little bit later. You can find timestamps in the description. Uh, I also have chapter mode enabled, so the progress bar is cut up into segments. If you hover over those, you can see which segment is what. Okay, let's go ahead and get in the spreadsheet. I'm gonna start with the tea time pairings right away. I'm not gonna try to spend a lot of time on this because usually I end up doing that. Basically what we're gonna do is look at this column called game. And the game basically looks at the starting hole and tea time. Hole one is the priority. The earliest, the earlier the tee time is also the priority. So we start game one on hole one at 7.20 in the morning. And that group is Kyle Stanley, Sam Ryder, and Scott Harrington. So as we go through this, that's basically what we're going to do. What we want to look at, each one of these groups, each one of these games, I want to find more than one highlighted color. And basically why they're highlighted, because they're either better on DK points or scoring average against field average. If it's light green, that means their DK average is better than scoring average. If it's red, um, it is, you know what? The green is actually incorrect because I did not highlight a secondary green color if they're both better than field average, a scoring average and DK. So let's just put it that way. Red is just strictly scoring average. But either way, if it's if it's colored, if it's highlighted, it's still, in my opinion, uh, a good thing. And the more that there are, those are the groups we want to target. So let's go ahead and get through this. Um, I don't want to talk about just one colored lineup or one colored games or games that only have one player that's better than field average. That's a better way to put it. We're going to be looking at several you know, we want to find two or three. So the very first group we see is Will Zalatoris and Emiliano Grillo. I actually like that group. The buckets are okay with this group. If you wanted an early morning stack, this is pretty good. And when it comes to showdown slate, you definitely want to um, you want to target golfers in the morning. So I think that's a really good one. Scrolling down, our second group where we see two or more is Matt Jones and uh, no, we don't. We, it's Joel Damon and, and Tom Hoagie. I don't mind that group. The buckets are a little shady. Um, Joel Damon has a good strokes gain bucket, but the last year, last week, it's it's not that great. Um, and the sweet spot score over here is also not that good. Um, and I'll explain what the sweet spot score is right after we cover tee time pairings. So... I'm going to probably pass on this group, although I don't think it's terrible. They both can score pretty decent, but I'm just going to, I'll probably resist. The next group that has two, James Hahn and Matthew Neesmith. Now, if you follow the 6K range or the 6K, um, shoot, what is their name? 
I think it's just called the 6K range on on Twitter. Matthew Neesmith, or no, 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 James Hahn is in their their list. I think it's a it's a pretty good spot for James Hahn. He missed the cut last week, but I think overall he's been playing pretty well. And his strokes gain bucket is one, which means all of his stats are positive. You know, strokes gain stats, that is. I think that's a pretty good combination to go with Matthew Neesmith. I have no issue with that. I'm not sure how many lineups I would actually create, but I might start my um, showdown sites there. The next group we see has three golfers in it uh, that are all highlighted. Sung J M, Ryan Palmer, and Russell Knox. I like this group. Uh, Ryan Palmer, really good. I mean, they're, the sweet spot score for these guys, really good. Uh, it's really, I mean, if any, if the combination's under 100, which this one is, absolutely love it so i'm just gonna go there the only hesitation i have sung jm doesn't have that great of a a bucket score so that would be my only issue with that group i'm still gonna play sung jay uh but now it kind of gives me more reasons to play, to play ryan palmer and, and russell knox so that group i like the next group, Brooks Kepka and Siwoo Kim. They're playing with Ricky Fowler, but Ricky hasn't really been playing that great since the beginning of the season. So his score uh, and, and the fact that he's not highlighted kind of represents that. I don't know how much Ricky I would want to play. I, he's not a complete fade. It's encouraging to see Brooks have a highlighted color because he's been struggling. I mean, he struggled last week at the Farmers Insurance Open. I think pairing up with either of these two golfers, probably pretty good. So that's a decent group. Their bucket score collectively is 93, so it's under 100. I like it. Uh, if I said bucket score, I meant sweet spot score. The next group is basically the dynamite group of the entire tournament. That's Xander Shoffley, R uh, Rory McIlroy, and Daniel Berger. You can see what their score is. It's 20. It's one of the lowest, if not the lowest. I can't remember if it is the lowest. I bet it is. But I have no hesitation playing any of these golfers. Daniel Berger, one of my favorite golfers this week. A lot of people's favorite golfers. I think if you wanted to pair them up, either of these two would be great. And in fact, I think all three of these guys are going to do well. So it's really picks and, or pick and choose, you know. What's your poison? You want to go with Sander? You want to go with Rory? I don't know. Maybe you go with both. Or maybe you go with... No, you can't go with all three. I almost I almost said it, but you can't. Uh, as we scroll down, Bubba Watson, Jason Day is another group. I'm probably going to stay away from Jason Day. I don't trust him. I, I, don't know, I don't know what happened last week, but it just wasn't even close. Like, he didn't even look... There were some moments where he looked okay, but for the most part, it just... It was a struggle. I don't trust it. Uh, a lot of people on Bubba. I don't have an issue with that per se. Um, but I don't know. Up to you guys. Next group we come to that has multiple multiple players highlighted. Austin Gray and Bri or Austin Gay. Austin Cook and Brian Gay. Uh, I like Austin Cook. I don't like Brian Gay. I don't like the strokes game bucket. Not to say he can't make the cut in that 6100. Not terrible, but... I'm 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 going to pass. Another good group here is Sebastian Munoz, Kevin Streelman, and Pat Perez. Really interesting to see Sebastian Munoz as a last year five. To me, that's not that terrible, honestly. Um, five ones have shown up inside the top ten before. Five ones have also shown up inside the top five. I don't have an issue with it, so that's pretty good. The other two golfers. The last week bucket scores are pretty terrible. Um, three fives, it isn't really all that bad to be a three five. Um, but being a two six, I will probably pass on that, honestly. I do like Kevin Streelman, and this might not be a terrible pairing, but I think I'll stay away from Pat Perez. Brian Harmon and Nick Taylor are in the next group, and they're both highlighted. I think... I think that's an okay group. I just don't like pairing two five ones together. So I'm probably not going to uh, play those guys together. We'll see how it goes in the review. See if I'm wrong. But I don't, I'm not going to go there. Henrik Norlander is in a group with Adam Shank and Ryan Moore. Norlander and Shank. 
Uh, they all, uh, th their scoring average is better than field average. Their DK points aren't, but I like this group. I like the possibility of them going low. Ryan Moore doesn't have enough stats. He hasn't played that many events this year, um, this season, I should say. So really hard to gauge where he's at in his game, uh, but not terrible, I suppose. Not a terrible play. I'll probably be, I'll be fading that though. A surprising group that has all three golfers highlighted: Charlie Hoffman, Bohog, and Harry Higgs. Harry Higgs was was like one of the best golfers in my model last week. He's probably one of I shouldn't say he's the worst. He's thirty second, but a four six with that bucket combination. I don't know if we're gonna see him inside the top ten. I think if there were actually crowds at this tournament, like decent crowds, he'd probably be one that lives it up. You know, I think he would probably do better, but the fact that it's kind of a benign week where there aren't that many spectators, I don't know. I I I really have no take one way or another. It's a decent group. I'm probably not getting there. The next group, Mark Hubbard, Scott Stallings, Brian, Brian Stewart. Um, I know certain players that are always on Brian Stewart. Uh, I don't think I'm going to this week. I might play him in one lineup or two, but... Bucket score, or like the bucket combination, not the greatest. The strokes gain bucket, also not that great. That kind of goes along with Scott Stallings as well, although a 2-3 ain't bad, and a 1-1 one, one is pretty good. So Mark Hubbard, I actually like this week. He's been trending downwards, but I think this is a week that we play Hubbard. Our next group has Sam Burns and Wyndham Clark in it. They're playing with Eric Van Ruyen, uh, or Frederick Van Ruyen. Uh, that is his real name his full name um yeah i like this group a lot of potential wyndham clark not the greatest bucket combination but the strokes game buckets look really good and i guess if there is a you know a golfer who's a four or five that might break through it might be a wyndham clark so i don't mind that at all we have a lot of groups that have a lot of pairings that are highlighted together uh another good group here scotty scheffler louis ustazen and harold varner the third I like I like Scheffler. I don't mind Ustazen. Ustazen sixth in in my model. So if I'm gonna play uh, Scheffler, I don't think it's terrible playing him with Ustazen. Going to our next group, we have Schwartzel and McCarthy. They're playing with Adam Hadwin. I don't I don't mind this group whatsoever. It's not like a dynamite group. What's you know? But yeah, I don't I don't I don't find an issue with that. Russell Henley has been talked a lot about uh, this week throughout the industry. One of the best strokes gain, you know, players since the restart, uh, or at least since the beginning of the season, and since the restart, I should say. Playing with John Huh, who has been a popular golfer uh, um, as of late, and I believe in the 6K range, uh, the guys on Twitter, I think... They had said he's made, like, he's only missed two cuts over the last 20 events or something like that. So, like, that's a pretty good pretty good number. The bucket combination, though, not great. So, if there was ever a reason John Huh's not going to do well, it's going to be based off that bucket combination. The next group has... Actually, never mind. That was Russell Hen Oh, Von Taylor. Von Taylor's not bad. I don't mind Von Taylor whatsoever. We actually have three golfers. Wow. Steve Stricker, Padraig Harrington, and Jerry Kelly. These all have to be based off of one tournament. Like, why Ryan Moore doesn't have enough tournaments to fall under field average or to be better than field average, I have no idea. Um, I guess what I did do is I did color these. So if they're dark green, that means their DK points and scoring average is better than field average. Light green is... DK average is better than scoring average and red is scoring average is better than field average. I should have said the DK part is better than field average as well. Anyways, going to stay away from that group. Don't care for it. I guess this is our dynamite group right here. 15. So this is our low one. It's John Rom, Justin Thomas and, and Harris English. Harris English, maybe the, the worst golfer out of the bunch. Obviously that's, that's easy to say, but I, I mean like trending wise, He's missed uh, a few a few cuts, or actually a couple cuts, I should say. So maybe that's a reason why we don't play Harris English this week. Um, 
But yeah, all in all, not terrible. Or maybe that's the reason we get on Harris English. Maybe no one else is going to play him. And if you're going to, pair him up with Rom or JT. I think it's pretty pretty decent. Uh, next group, Webb Simpson, Hideki Matsuyama, Gary Woodland. Love it. I think you should play it. Uh, Matthew Wolf is in the next group with... I kind of blew through that group. I'm trying to save a little time here. We're, we're going to go through these pretty pretty quickly. Wolf is with Steel and Armor. Uh, don't don't really have a take one way or another. Todd is with Revy and Garnett. So Todd and Garnett are the ones that are highlighted. I, I don't know. It might be a good way to get on Brennan Todd. At 7,400, I mean, he was in the 8K range not too long ago. It's probably a good, good reason to play Todd. You know, especially playing with Revy and Garnett. Um, yeah, I think it's a decent, decent group. We have Corey Connors, Martin Laird, and Ted Potter Jr. in the other group. Nope. I mean, I do like Connors, but that bucket score, I'm going to pass. No, thank you. Michael Thompson with Aaron Wise and Robert Streb. That's actually not a terrible group. I don't know how much I'm going to get on any of these guys, but honestly, you could do worse. Kucher is with Keegan Bradley, and they're playing with Martin Trainer. I will stay away from Martin Trainer at all costs. He is the second to last ranked golfer in this field for me. I'm not going to get there. If you needed a reason to play Kucher or Bradley, both of those guys together, not terrible. Their, their sweet spot score is not terrible either. Interesting group here with Horschel and CT Pan. They're both highlighted, and they're playing with Jordan Spieth. Um, I don't. Uh, personally, I it's a good spot for Billy Horschel, and I don't mind playing with Jordan Spieth whatsoever. So I think I think that's a decent route to go. There are a lot of pairings. Wow, Straka, Redmond, Tom Lewis, love that group. Gooch, Tringali, um, they're playing with Zinjun Jang or Zhang. Not terrible, but I'll probably stay away from that. So finally able to get through the t10 pairings i wanted to keep that somewhat short um let's go ahead and talk about kind of a recap of the preview and course fit so i'm gonna go through this really quick what we found out in the preview is when we look at historical salaries looking back you know since 2018 where dk kind of had these pricing i didn't have 27 or 2017's pricing um but 2018 2019 2020 10K golfers usually find themselves inside the top 10. You can see it didn't happen in 2018. But when we look at the overall top 10, six out of 14 golfers who were 10K and above finished inside the top 10. I think that's a pretty good number. Um, I think you could probably use that when you're trying to figure out, you know, what percentage should I play of lineups? I kind of want to use this number as you know, ownership level wise, how many, if I'm creating lineups, I, I, eh, I don't know how I want to, uh, I'm going to look at that 42.86%. I mean, this number over the last three years, if we divide this by three, we're going to get, uh, you know, four golfers basically inside the top 10. And if we look at every given year, you know, there's three there. There's three there as well. I'm sorry. We're not looking at that number. We're looking at this number. Stupid. So two. It would be averaging two, but we have three last year, three in 2019 and 2018. Um, I just realized this should actually be up here. And everything else should be bumped down. Unbelievable. The things you miss. All right, don't want to waste more of your time, but that's how it should look. <laughs> Anyways, 10K golfers, that's something we kind of want to target. We can see the most that finished inside the top 10, 7 to 8K. Again, we talked about this in the preview. I'm not going to discuss it anymore, but really want to, to me, I'm targeting 10K golfers. I want to play 10K golfer. It only makes sense to. Uh, if we were to go a balanced route, you're, you're never going to get there with just eight K golfers. You're going to have to leave a lot of money on the table if you're going to go that route. Um, so I think playing a 10 K golfer is the way to go. 
We did talk about optimal lineups in the preview. I'm not going to go over that here. You can go ahead and look in the preview. Um, we did talk about the bucket system. We can cover that one really quickly as well. Basically, the top two ranges, or I should say the top range for the last year bucket, golfers who finished first to 20th, uh, a lot of those golfers has finished inside the top 10. That's nearly 37% of all top 10 golfers dating back to 2013. So that's a huge number. But when we look at the field, like each field that had, you know, finishing placements of 1 to 20 for each of those years or the year prior to each of the years you see on the screen, 22% of them finished inside the top 10. So that's a really good clip. Uh, definitely want to consider that. You can see what the other ones fall. The next bucket, obviously, or I should say, are did not plays. Uh, the third bucket, golfers who missed the cut the week before. And you can see how those per percentages rank. Um, really, there isn't a t telltale s sign other than golfers who finished top 20 last year. The rest of them you can just kind of mix interchangeably. For last week buckets, your number one are golfers who did not play. Um, it, it accounts for 35% of the top 10 over the last eight years. However, only 9% of golfers who did not play collectively from 21 to 2013 finished inside the top 10. So not as good as you see the last year ones, but not terrible. The best actual, you know, top 10 to field conversion would be your golfers who finished first to 20 the week before. And those would be your last week bucket two golfers. So when we're looking at those golfers or just for those at home, when you're trying to think of who you want to target, certainly I think going that route is probably the best. Um, I do think that... I've noticed this throughout the last couple tournaments. Um, the overall numbers in the field are changing because we don't we don't have a new crop of golfers. We don't have the corn fairy golfers that usually graduate, like twenty five of them graduate and jump on tour and are trying to you know jockey for their tour cards. We don't have that uh, this year. We do have a couple new guys, but by and large, not as many. So we see differences uh, when it comes to the fields, basically. And I would say <clears throat> it's going to be the difference between missed cuts and did not plays. They're going to they're gonna flip. You can see it kind of did right here where we have more missed cuts than we did did not plays. You can kind of see almost throughout, <clears throat> excuse me, throughout the rest of the years, the did not plays outweigh uh, the missed cuts, but not so much this year. So that's the one difference I see. Same thing applies, you know, for the last week range. So I believe we'll probably see a few more missed cuts. I shouldn't say a few more. We might see one or two more than we typically do inside the top 10. So it would be worth it to play last year threes. It would also be worth it to play last week threes. And again, those are golfers who missed the cut. So now that we know that, we can kind of, when we look at our player pools and stuff like that, we can really cut it down. Okay. Uh, with course fit, you know, we went through a course breakdown. Basically, what I told you was this course is wide open. Uh, I shouldn't say wide open. There are obviously some water hazards, some bunkers and stuff that you want to avoid. But there are no trees that are going to dictate or dictate certain shot shapes. So that's why I said it's wide open. You get to basically hit whatever shot shape you want. There are some greens that would find it more beneficial to have a certain shot shape over another. But by and large, shot shapes aren't going to matter for this golf course. Um, it's not tree lined. It is kind of tree lined, but with desert trees, they they're not that they're not that tall, uh, and it they're not going to dictate what type of shot shape you need. Um, going back to the DK page here, we didn't talk about grass stats uh, because like we talked about course history and looked at our, our favorite course history plays. We didn't talk about grass stats mostly because this tournament uh, is being played at a time where Bermuda grass cannot grow. Somebody had made a comment in my preview video saying it will be Bermuda grass this week. 
looking at past temperatures in um shoot i think i actually got rid of it looking at past temperatures over the last month so scottsdale weather last month if we look the high was 67 and the low was 36 uh, and that was in january the high has been 72 so far in february we've only been in you know two days worth but if we go and we look, I, I brought up a, a document. You can obviously look to see how, how well Bermuda grows in certain temperatures. Um, the average daily temperature needs to be above 75 degrees. That's the average daily temperature. That's not, you know, the average high uh, or just the high for the day. That means 24 hours for that day, you know, 12 in the morning to 1159 p.m., needs to average 75 degrees when the weather is 67 like the high is 67 degrees that's obviously impossible can't do it um so it's not bermuda it will it won't be bermuda it can't be bermuda uh i have taken agronomy classes i like i bring this up just to show you guys but this is stuff that you've you're taught in school um you can read a little bit more here just pause the video uh it Soil temperatures need to be above 65 degrees for significant growth. Um, yeah, it, it, and it does the best between 95 and 100 degrees. That's where the growth is optimal. Opt, you know, optimum daytime temperature for Bermuda, Bermuda grass. So now that I've said that, it's not Bermuda grass. Like it, it, it's just not. Um, and I don't mean to say that out of spite or anything like that. I, I just want to reinforce that thought that thought process it just it can't be bermuda grass um with that being said i can't talk about grass stats because i haven't collectively been keeping track of rye grass i do everything by spreadsheets which is just basically copying pa pa uh, pasting you know data points stuff like that i didn't do it for um rye grass and i don't have a database that i can just you know not currently i can't just access which tournaments are ryegrass and look at scoring averages so couldn't talk about grass stats we did talk about course history that is all i have to say about the course history part okay let's look at the strokes gained buckets uh i i do have this column over here populated with a value um one through six let me go let's do by salary and then by strokes gain bucket so you can see who the best you know priced guys or the highest priced guys are in their strokes gain bucket now this wasn't populated last week i'm glad that i'm able to get it to you how these buckets are numbered is basically what you see from left to right bucket one is everything positive bucket two is positive off the t positive putting bucket three is positive off the t negative putting Bucket four is negative off the tee, positive putting. Bucket five is negative off the tee, negative putting. And bucket six are no strokes gained stats. So those are golfers who just have not played enough events in the PGA Tour to acquire strokes gained stats. Um, I am keeping strokes gained off to the side for each tournament. So I could obviously use that, but this is looking at season long stats. So I'm looking at season long um, strokes gained stats. Um, let's see here. Well, we're, I just had a thought. I want to see, I'm trying to remember. Oh, so each one of these buckets has kind of a pick number, you know, pick something through something. So you can see for bucket two, it says positive off the T plus positive putting pick two out of four. And a lot of that just comes from what I have seen collectively from each tournament going in the past, you know, and 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 looking this actually goes back to the zozo championship um these are kind of the averages if we were to go ahead and pull up the 2020 dk page and if i were to go ahead and put a freeze on this and scroll over we can look at the strokes gained and if you remember what i said what a, a one one would be positive off the tee positive putting webb simpson he was a strokes gained bucket one tony finau positive off the tee negative putting was a strokes gain bucket three last year 
as was Justin Thomas. Bubba Watson was a strokes gained one. Well, he would be actually a strokes gained two because around the green was negative. So he didn't have all stats positive. So he would have been a strokes gained bucket two. So we already have one, 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 two, and two threes for strokes gained buckets. Then Nate Lashley comes up. He's a negative off the tee, positive putter. That'd be a bucket four. Homa is off the tee in putting. That's a bucket three because everything else is negative. Or I mean, a bucket two. Sorry, that would be a bucket two, which is really surprising. His other stats were just terrible. And then we have another bucket four and another bucket four. Now we have a bucket one and a bucket five. All these golfers inside the top 10. So you can see the importance of the strokes game buckets. That's just 2020 if we go back to 20 or if we go to 2019. And look at this. I can go ahead and, and do the exact same thing. And scroll over. By the way, look at all of the colors that you see here. Dark green. Obviously, those are your number ones. You can see that that is a bucket that really matters. Threes actually changed into twos and twos into threes uh, for this year because there were that many more inside the top ten. Actually... Never mind, it might not have happened there, but they they did switch. I I would have to look. Um, but going to 2019, looking at strokes gained, Ricky Fowler, off the tee is positive, putting's positive, they're negative, so that would be a strokes gained bucket two. Brandon Grace, negative off the tee, negative putting, that's a bucket five. Negative off the tee, negative putting, again another bucket five golfer, and that was Justin Thomas. And then we had all things positive. There's a bucket one. Positive off the tee, negative putting. That's a bucket three. Uh, positive off the tee, negative putting again. Bucket three. There's a bucket one. A bucket two. Like, so on and so forth. So again, these buckets are following that trend that we're trying to find. So let's go ahead and talk about the strokes game buckets for this, this year. Justin Thomas is your top everything positive. This is strokes game bucket one. Everything pos uh, positive. Actually, you know what? Instead of really talking about these guys, what I'm going to um, say is just pause this video at any point in time. If you see a golfer you like, write them down. You know, Keep it in your head. These are the buckets that you, you want to choose. But what I like to do is go, okay, there's JT. I like JT. I can pair him up with, say, Billy Horschel. I can't believe these are not sorted by salary. That was my bad. I think this is when I was looking at tee times. So anyways, what I like to do is, is go through each one of these buckets and kind of try to figure out like an easy price point that I can get to. You know, obviously you can see all the expensive golfers at the top, but as I scroll down, like obviously I want to last your bucket one. And this is, this is fun because I can color code it this way where I can go, okay, that's a one. I know that. This is the last year two. I know that. This is the last year three. You know, he was also in a group that, that we liked. I think he was playing with uh, Will Zalatoris. So I can go ahead and find Will Zalatoris. There we go. We got two last year one or two strokes game bucket ones, a strokes game bucket two, strokes game bucket three. You know what? We need a four. I'm going to go with Mark Hubbard. Why not? So that's another last year one. So this is pretty fun to do this way. Let me go through all the buckets for you. So you can see one. Let me scroll down two. You can see Bo Hauser makes up two. Uh, go to our strokes game bucket three. Hideki Matsuyama does really well at this tournament. Um, $9,800, pretty good. He is in that that bucket three, though, for strokes gain, which is which is a good bucket to be in. But you can see all the players that are in that one. As we go through this, I'm just going to go ahead and sort this. I think it'll be easier for you guys to see as well. Um, Matthew Wolf leads uh, strokes game bucket four. So what I would say with this bucket, don't play more than two, but, you know, limit maybe what you want to play. If you do like Mark Hubbard and he fits in your lineup, pairing him up with Matthew Wolf, probably not a good idea. Same with Gary Woodland. If you like Gary Woodland, maybe not the best to pair, pair him up with Jordan Spieth, so on and so forth. Uh, negative putting. Again, I'm going to sort this. And you can catch a lot of this. So after I sort it, boom, pause it. You can see it goes to Zinjun. Everyone, you know, bottom down. Unfortunately, William McGirt, he's one of my favorite plays uh, in the 6K range. Maybe not so much anymore. But then you can see the top of the range here. 
Max Homa leads it, then Matt Kuchar. Really weird to see Matt Kuchar up there. I didn't know he would had he had negative putting. But yeah, I like to mix and match. You can see Ryan Moore's in the no strokes game. Uh, last week we saw zero golfers make it inside the top thirty. You know, out of this bucket that includes Ryan Moore. So I actually I think only one golfer made the cut out of this, and it was not Ryan Moore. I don't know how to take this bucket yet. Obviously, if there are, you know, if Tiger Woods shows up in this bucket and he's healthy again, he hasn't been playing for a while, so more likely he will show up in that bucket at some point in time. Uh, obviously, that's where you want want to play. But probably, you know, the, these, if anything, these are your big lottery picks. You know, I don't know how I feel about playing any of those guys. So with all of this, you can see all of the golfers. I like to pull up. Uh, an optimizer, which kind of just, for whatever reason, kind of twitched on me there. But I like to pull up this optimizer. Now, I'm actually creating a different optimizer, but it's something that looks a little bit more clean, like cleaner to show uh, through these videos and doesn't have like these buttons right here. Either way, it look, it'll be cleaner, it'll be easier to do for videos. But what this optimizer will do is I can set my constraints. It looks at all of these. Last year buckets, it looks at last week bucket, strokes gain bucket, and you know what price range. So if I say I want a minimum, unfortunately you can't see it says minimum, but if I wanted a minimum of 110K golfer, when I hit run optimizer, it'll spit out 110 you know, at least one 10 K golfer. Um, if I put zero, then it just ends up being zero. Let me go ahead and just clear all of this out with all zeros and run the optimizer to see what the best optimizer is or what is the best optimal lineup. See what it spits out for me. So it is Webb Simpson, Daniel Berger. Those are very popular plays. Louis Oosthuizen, Brennan Steele, Michael Thompson, and Stuart Sink. And what it chose for me, it went and it collected two last year bucket one golfers, three last year bucket two golfers, one last year bucket three golfers. So obviously it stayed away from last year bucket four, five, and six. Just shows that they are not in the optimal order. You know what I forgot to do? I forgot to show you what the uh, sweet spot score was based off of. And that's exactly what you know, this optimizer is looking at my apologies. So the sweet spot score is only looking at a few different pieces of information. I don't have grass stats. I just left this here for when I make the next one, but we're looking at the bucket combination, the percentage I just put into a regular number. Then we're looking at official world golf ranking and all of these stats are, I'm trying to get them as the, the max person in each of these stats close to 100 it's based off of 100 so official world golf ranking obviously john rom second in the world 99.33 justin thomas is number three in the world i think he is at 99 yeah two and three shoffley is fourth so he is at 98.67 all all that makes sense so they're only getting slight advantages this high up at the top but then if you are not ranked i just put in a regular value um Actually, I basically made that value zero. Um, or did I? Yep, it would be zero. And then I went with course history, recent form, DK average, and scoring average. I put all of those things together. Again, your best golfers are going to be closer to 100. And if there are no stats, I just put in a dummy value. Um, that didn't really hurt them, but also didn't really help them. And that's how we came up with, that's how I came up with a sweet spot score for this week. What I had been doing in the past was basically using um, like the last year bucket, last week bucket, that kind of thing. And that kind of defeats the purpose because I can set my constraints here. I don't need to tell the system to tell me, you know, choose this guy or that guy. Uh, interestingly enough, it chose five last week bucket one golfers. Um, and again, it's not included in that score. So it's, it is very interesting that um, it chose five of those golfers. It is looking at recent form. So that's probably why. Again, oh no, last year ones are did not plays from last week. And then last year twos or last week twos were top 20. 
in the strokes game bucket, it's it's grabbing three golfers basically with positive off the tee, positive putting, but one of them has all positive, which is perfect. This is exactly what I want to see. And then it's grabbing one strokes game bucket three and two strokes game bucket four golfers, which I find also appealing. I have no issue with that. And then it's grabbing one of each price point, but it's grabbing two out of the seven to eight K range. I like that. So you can see what it looks like up here. Um, love it. Now, what is the most optimal John Rom lineup? I can go ahead, lock him up, lock him into my optimizer. It's going to spit me out the best John Rom lineup. It, it's including uh, Michael Thompson. I think Brendan Steele was in that last one and also Louis Oosthuizen, but it's replacing a couple of them, bringing in Carlos Ortiz, Chris Kirk. You can see with the last year buckets kind of even out a little bit. Uh, last week buckets kind of do as well. Strokes game buckets look fantastic. Um, and I should actually call this SGP. How about I just do this? Um, I hope it just does it with those. Okay, perfect. Um, so this actually turned out pretty decent. It's four, seven to eight K golfers, one, eight to nine K and a 10 K. And it used all 50,000 uh, salary. Love it. That's to me a pretty decent one. How about a Xander lineup? Same. Oh, actually it included Webb Simpson. A couple, like three 7Ks and a 6K. That's super interesting. Uh, strokes game buckets still look good. Last week buckets look really good. Uh, and so do the last year buckets. Like this optimizer is working pretty darn good. Go ahead and scroll down. And now we have JT, your best JT lineup. Probably is going to include Webb. No, it doesn't. Brings in Steele and uh, Ustazen again. Kirk shows up again. I do like Kirk, so not terrible. I like that a lot. Now, if I were to do this a little differently, last week bucket ones, I don't really care what the max is because you're more than likely going to find a better golfer from there. But if I were to go ahead and put the max at three uh, and say I wanted at least, let's say, two last week bucket two golfers and run that optimizer, um, we're going to come up with a little bit different. So Adam Hadwin actually, did Adam Hadwin have a top 20 finish last week? Did he really? I am so surprised by that if he did. He finished 18th last week. Okay. Good for you, Adam Hadwin. Um, okay. I, I didn't think he did that well. But okay, so that, that works out with Adam Hadwin. And now my buckets look a little bit better. I can go ahead and say I want zero last week fives and zero last week sixes. Same goes with last year fives and last year sixes. I don't want any of those. Let's see who it ends up getting rid of. Looks like it got rid of Kirk. But now it's it's Daniel Berger, JT, Max Homa, Bren Steele, Adam Hadwin, Matt Jones. Not a terrible lineup. If I wanted two 10K golfers, who's that going to spit out for me? JT, Webb, Homa, Hadwin, Matt Jones, Stuart Sink. So Hadwin's showing up a lot. If I don't want Hadwin, um, I can actually, let me run it without the lock of Rory or uh, JT. And now it puts in Xander. And it gets rid of Hadwin. Perfect. But it puts in Thompson, you know, whatever. So either way, kind of showing you a little different. Uh, if we wanted like a, a couple different variations, let's go ahead and, and do our completely, um, balance build and see what it shoots out. So we're looking at zero 10 K golfers. Let's see if that'll work out using all 50,000. We're looking at Daniel Berger, Ryan Palmer, Billy Horschel, Max Homa shows up again. So does Chris Kirk. So does Bren Steele. So Unfortunately, it's, I mean, it's, it's looking at the best, 
um, opti optimal golfers, I can go ahead and remove like say Chris Kirk or Max Homa from my list just by selecting no. So where's Chris Kirk? So go ahead and, and do that and get rid of those guys because I want to see what it will spit out with, without those golfers. And it kind of gives me, I mean, it still brings in Brennan Steele, but now Brennan Todd, Matt Jones, they're obviously showing up quite a bit. But I can go ahead, set all these constraints a little bit differently. Um, personally, I wouldn't want to have zero uh, 10K golfers, but obviously we can. If I'm doing this, usually I like to kind of do something like this, where I'm looking at two last year ones, one last year two, one last year three. Same kind of applies here, where I want at least the minimum of that. And one there, usually one, one, eh, sometimes two. And then let's say one strokes game bucket three. And let's see what that ends up spitting me out. Xander, Berger, Steele, Todd, Hadwin, Thompson. Golfers we've already talked about, so it does fit that pretty decent. I only want two strokes game bucket and probably one and one. Those are going to be my constraints down there. Okay, so I like this lineup. Simpson, Berger, Palmer, Steele, Jones, Sink. Now, if I want to get rid of Steel Jones sink. Obviously, you know I can. Um, I'll I'll run it one time for you guys because I I think you know I hate seeing the same guys all the time. I'm looking at seven four six nine and six eight. So Let's see what that ends up spinning out now. Thompson, Adam Long, Nate Lashley. Okay. So giving us a, a few different players, but still sticking with Simpson, Berger, and Palmer. I mean, Simpson's score is only below... Well, that makes sense, right? Berger rates out really well. Obviously makes a lot of sense why... A lot of people would be on Berger. Kind of seen the same thing with putting JT in there. Um, I just want to see some different names than what I'm I'm typically seeing up here. I'm sure we're gonna see Michael Thompson again and Adam Long. If we do, then I'll change it. Yeah, Thompson. So now we have two 10K golfers. So the optimizer is really liking um, certain golfers in the 7K range, and it's really trying to target them and say, hey, these are the golfers we want. They fit really well with these 10K golfers up here, you know, and it continuously spits out those golfers for us. But this is something else I'd like to see here. So Xander, JT, Palmer, Redman. I'm glad to see Redman up there, Robert Streb, and Hudson Swafford. So I'm going to leave it there. Uh, I think that was enough, you know, kind of going back and forth of looking at the different types of optimal lineups can happen. Obviously, you guys can see that um, the different constraints and stuff like that. Um, I did give this out before, but I, I required, you know, someone share this video, like it, you know, put a comment in there. Um, what I'm going to say is this. I need to see a comment. If you want this spreadsheet, I need you to like the video. Uh, I need to see a comment in, in the comment section from you. And if your name doesn't match up with your email and your comment, I need you to screenshot. No, 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 no. That doesn't make any sense. And I'm not going to make you guys put in your email for the in the comment section because I don't want other people emailing you. But 
you can find my email address in the description. Um, I am going to make you work for it because there was a lot of time put into this. I need you guys to comment and like this. And if you're on Twitter, sharing it is a huge thing. Also liking it would be a good thing too, but that doesn't really matter to me, but sharing it so other people can see it. Um, that is an easy way. And then obviously DM me on Twitter, um, saying, Hey, you know, I like that spreadsheet. And obviously then I can see also you shared it, but if there's no easy way for me to see that you commented, you know, like your email handle is different than your username that you choose for YouTube. It's going to be really difficult to determine. Cause I, I think I just gave it out blindly before, but either way, Maybe I'll just go by the, like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I want to say gentleman's agreement, but that's not exactly what I'm looking for. Honor system. Maybe I'll just, I'll just go off the honor system. So again, if you want it, email me, like the video, throw a comment in there saying nice things or bad things. Uh, if you can do bad things, give me criticisms. Uh, but either way. That's all you have to do in order to get this. I think it's it's awesome. Um, in the future, this isn't going to be free, but in order to get you know a little recognition out there, I I I can give this away for basically for free, just for a like and a comment. So that's what I'm going to ask for. Um, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and and leave the video here. Appreciate you guys staying around all the way until now. Honestly, it it means a lot. So hopefully. You guys enjoyed the video. You got a lot out of it. Um, and it, it provides a lot of big winners for us. Hopefully you guys win. Hopefully I win. We're all winners. It'd be great. But either way, thank you guys for watching. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And if you want this uh, optimizer, send me an email by doing the th three things I just said. All right. See you later.